Mark Watney has been left to die alone on Mars. After an accident with the Ares 3 mission, he's the sole NASA survivor on the Red Planet, with no chance of escape. He doesn't have enough food to survive until a rescue mission comes, and besides, no one even knows he's still alive. Rescue is over 140 million miles away. This is the plot of the latest science fiction film The Martian, and it has some really great and imaginative science in it. But is the science in The Martian possible? Could a human survive on Mars for nearly two years? Or is the science of the Martian just a load of old nonsense? Let's find out. So in the film, the character Mark Watney, played by Matt Damon, is presumed dead on the surface of Mars after an accident with NASA's latest mission to the Red Planet. The rest of the crew are on their way back to Earth, but the big surprise is that Mark Watney is actually still alive. He's safe for the moment inside a shelter, but he quickly realises that it's going to be several years before any rescue missions can come and get him from Mars. Mark needs to very quickly work out how he can survive on the Red Planet for several years with supplies that are only supposed to last him several months. So what do you need to be able to survive on Mars? Well the first thing you're going to need is oxygen. The average human can last a few minutes without oxygen before you pass out and die. The next thing you need is water. Humans on average can last a few days without water before our bodies start to break down and stop working. Finally, even if you have enough water and oxygen, you're going to start needing food within a few weeks. Food contains nutrients, minerals and especially energy that our bodies need to be able to function and to work. Adding to this shelter, medicine and also the psychological effects of being alone on another planet, you can see that living on Mars isn't so easy. So let's start with oxygen. In the film, machines inside the shelter are able to convert carbon dioxide, air we breathe out, into oxygen, the air we need to breathe in to be able to survive. The Martian atmosphere is actually 96% carbon dioxide, which is much higher than it is down here on Earth. And NASA is already looking in real life of ways of trying to convert the carbon dioxide in the Martian atmosphere into oxygen, which you can pump into the shelters of future Mars missions so astronauts can actually breathe in. This means that NASA doesn't have to take a lot of oxygen up to Mars. We can actually convert some of the Martian atmosphere from carbon dioxide into oxygen that the astronauts need to breathe. But water is a little bit trickier. You see, water is extremely heavy, so you don't have to take a lot of it to Mars with you. You can also make water by combining hydrogen and oxygen together. You need a lot of hydrogen and oxygen to make water, and it's a rather dangerous process as well. However, the International Space Station already has a way of producing water for the astronauts on board, but it's not very nice. You see, there are machines on board the International Space Station which takes in the astronauts' pee and they remove all the nasty stuff from it and return pure water which the astronauts drink. So, it's likely that any of the first astronauts that go to Mars are probably going to be able to survive there by drinking their own pee. So Mark Watney has machines which are able to produce oxygen and water for him. But the biggest problem he'll face is the need for food. He has enough supplies to last around one year, but he knows the first rescue mission could be five years away. There isn't a machine that can magically make food like there is water and oxygen. But to get around this, he uses his botany skills to be able to produce and grow potatoes on the surface of Mars. But we know there aren't any plants on the surface of Mars naturally. So how can he grow potato plants in this hostile environment? Well the trick is to somehow add nutrients and minerals to the Martian soil to allow the plants to be able to grow. Now if you thought that drinking your own pee was pretty bad, then growing potatoes with your own poo probably isn't much nicer. But faeces do contain a large amount of nutrients and minerals that our body isn't able to absorb, which the potato plants really love and really helps them to grow. So, Mark Watley combines the human faeces with the Martian soil and this allows him to grow the potato plants. But potato plants and all other plants also need a small amount of oxygen and water, so he grows them inside his shelter. So it seems very hard to be able to grow plants on the surface of Mars, but in the right conditions it is definitely possible. But Mars isn't a very friendly place. Being much further away from the sun than the earth and having a much thinner atmosphere makes Mars a rather cold place. You need to spend a lot of energy to create heat to keep your astronauts warm. Now in the film, the astronauts use solar panels to generate electricity to power the machines inside the shelter and also heaters to keep the astronauts warm. 
Now there's less energy falls on the surface of Mars than it does on Earth, because Mars is further away. But if you have enough solar panels and you make them more and more efficient, which they're likely to be in the future for Mars missions in real life, then you could potentially provide enough energy for a Mars colony in future NASA missions. But assuming you solve all of these issues, one of the biggest problems that astronauts like Mark Watney and astronauts in real life will face is the psychological problems. Being stuck on a planet on your own isn't very nice, especially when it takes 30 minutes for messages from Mars to pass to Earth because the large distances are apart. However, NASA is already doing things in real life to test the psychological effects of being stuck on your own in a confined area, and this is all preparation for real Mars missions in the future. So surviving on Mars is indeed possible. Oxygen and water are very dependent on machines, but as long as nothing happens with them, any people on Mars should be able to survive. Hopefully no future NASA astronauts will have to unexpectedly grow food on the surface of Mars, but it does seem like it is a possible thing to be able to do. All in all, the science in The Martian is absolutely brilliant, it's a really great film. It's really nice to be able to see more focus on science than fiction in science fiction films. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check out the rest of my channel for some really great science videos. Like and subscribe. And why not leave a comment below telling me what you thought about the Martian film. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys all soon. Hi everyone. So the film Interstellar came out this week, and I've been lucky enough to go see it already. And it's a really, really good film, so you should definitely go check it out. And a lot of people have been praising the science behind the film, since it's very good.